So Neil, a lot of cyclists suffer from knee pain. Mm. What have you seen to be the common causes? <clears throat> so knee pain on a bike is, I guess, of all the pains that, that come in, all the, the pains that people complain about, is probably the most common area. The knee tends to suffer the most on a bike. It's a fairly simple hinge joint uh, in comparison to a lot of the other joints in the human body. And hinge joints tend to move in one plane. You know, they, they flex and extend and they don't love being twisted and they don't love being bent in the opposite you know, in, in, in a, a plane of motion that's outside of their natural plane of motion. Now the bike, the bike's cranks move in a perfectly symmetrical plane of motion and the knee doesn't, you know, that one knee's always tracking outside the line of the pedal or inside or it's moving on an oblique plane. And if that plane of motion is, is far enough different to the plane of motion of the cranks, the rider will often get a, a soft tissue overload problem. So I thought I'd go over four, four bits here, the front of the knee pain, the back of the knee, the, the inside or the medial side of the knee pain, and then the lateral knees pain. So most of these are what we call, a t or a version of what we would call synovitis, which is connective tissue inflammation. Um, none of them are terribly dangerous in that they, they tend to not cause, on a bike, they tend to not cause really chronic lasting damage, which is good. But if, if you don't resolve the positional causation of the, of the inflammation, they are destined to slowly get worse. Or at least, you know, you'll train hard, it'll start hurting and you'll back back off. You train hard, it'll start hurting, it'll back, and you have to back back off. So you'll reach a plateau of your training where the injury is limiting you rather than your ability to train more. So we'll talk first about the, the front of the knee. Now, on the front of the knee, the main structures that tend to get sore are the patellofemoral joint and the patella tendon itself. The patella femoral joint is basically, the kneecap runs up and down in a notch on the front of the femur. On the back of the kneecap, there's a, a, a ridge and, and on the front of the femur, there's a notch and that ridge articulates in the notch and it moves up and down, you know, more or less vertically as the knee flexes and extends. On the back of the kneecap and the front of the femur, there's a layer of cartilage, which is about three or four millimeters thick. And when, when you're 18, it's three or four millimeters thick. <laughs> and when you're 75, there's not much of it left. So it wears out over the course of your life. If that cartilage, if that kneecap is allowed to track vertically through that notch, it will last a very, very long time. I'm talking about when you're cycling. The level of load on it when you're riding is very low compared to walking and running. So you, your knee can put up with a fair bit, but if the kneecap is being pulled out of alignment on the front of the notch of the femur, and it does that with enough repetitions of motion, it tends to focalize the pressure on one small section of the cartilage and it gets inflamed. And you can, if you're unlucky, you can wear a hole through it in one small spot. And that gives you, that's the, probably the most, the single most common knee pain would be patella femoral pain. Right. Patella femur, femur the, um, the patella articulation with the front of the femur, caused by the patella trying to track offline. And in terms of motion patterns that you'd see with the, the rider, the knee is basically moving outside the line of the crank. So the crank's doing this and the knee's doing this. Yes. Um, the tendon below the kneecap, where it, articulate, where it um, connects onto the front of your, your tibia, the patella tendon, that often gets niggled because of inflammation leaking down from the back of the patellofemoral joint. So the, the, the kneecap gets inflamed on the back, the inflammation leaks down and annoys the tendon, and so you can get pain in the tendon below the kneecap for the same reason. You can also get pain in that tendon from over or under extension of the knee. So if the seat height is way too high or way too low, the patella tendon can tend to get overloaded because the quad is doing way too much work and the angles when the knee, when the seat is really low, the knee is flexed over a long way and the patella tendon is really stretched out and it's, yeah, the, it, it can get micro trauma and micro inflammation and, and, and get, get cranky. It can get a bit, um, a bit calcified and right. inflamed and ten tendinopathies are in that tendon and not nice. Relatively uncommon on a bike, but they do happen. Mostly caused by the seat height being way too high or too low, whereas the frontal patella femoral pain is caused by the knee tracking in an oblique plane away from the crank. So we'll go to the back of the knee now. The back of the knee pains are less common. Um, Generally speaking, pain at the back of the knee is most often caused by either the popliteus, which is a little muscle which crisscrosses across the back of the knee getting overloaded, or the actual hamstring tendons where they attach below the knee getting overloaded. Almost invariably, the hamstring tendon trouble is caused by the seat being too high, the leg overextending, and as the hamstring struggles to control the knee as it unlocks into extension, uh, it gets overloaded and the hamstring tendons get, get annoyed. The popliteus pain is a 
little, little muscle which crosses on an angle across the back of the knee, it tends to have its cause in, in rota abnormal rotatory motions of the foot. So if the foot is squirreling on the pedal when you're, when you're pedaling, see so your foot's going around like this and you see that your foot's rotating a lot, that can transfer rotational load up to the back of the knee and the popliteus will try to control that and it's not a big muscle and it can't do it for very long and it will get aggravated. Um, not an easy, not an easy one to pinpoint. They, the two pains can be really, really, really similar, and they have totally different causes. Oh. <laughs> lateral knee pain. Now, I guess a huge number of the people that are watching this who've got knee pain will have lateral knee pain on the outside edge of the knee, and you know most of them will know it as ITB pain. Mm. And you know, every, every cyclist knows about ITBs. The iliotibial band is a huge sheet of connective tissue which is attached to the your glute max and some of the, um, the little mu muscles on the outside of the hip. Runs down the outside of your leg and attaches below your knee with a couple of different insertion points. It tends to get overloaded for exactly the same reasons as the patellofemoral joint because it's connected onto the outside of the kneecap. It depends on the rider. Some of them, if their knee is moving in an oblique plane to the crank, one rider will get knee pain and the other one will get ITB pain for the same reason. But essentially the ITB pain is almost always one-sided. You virtually never see anyone with a dual-sided ITB pain. Um, and it's to do with pedaling asymmetry. The leg is having its plane of motion challenged. It's having difficulty maintaining verticality above the pedal. It's chopping in from outside the line of the pedal and the ITB is getting overloaded. Your glutes trying to control Control the motion of the knee and it can't do it and it loads up the patellofemoral joint and the ITB and the ITB insertion often develops a friction synovitis which is known as iliotibial band friction syndrome right. yeah oh. it's a bit of a mouthful well done or a bursitis Okay. Which is the burst is a little thing directly underneath it same same process of causation slightly different inflammatory pattern the medial knee pain on the inside edge of the knee, most medial knee pain is caused by inflammation of what they call the pes anserinus, which is the insertion of three muscles um, on the front lower edge of the tibial plateau. And almost invariably, it's caused by the knee whipping across the line of the pedal. So the knee will kind of, this is a very difficult one to, to show you, but the knee will come down and if, if it whips in at the bottom of the stroke, you'll see the rider's knee comes down and then it kind of rotates or flickers in. In it, towards the frame. Towards the frame, yeah. yeah. If it does that really rapidly, the the sartorius in particular, which is one of the quadricep muscles, which attaches onto this, this section below the kneecap, will desperately try to control that little whip of the knee mm. and it doesn't do so well it tries to externally rotate the femur and hold it and it can only do that for so long so the pes anserinus can get inflamed from that little whip now in terms of causation um, almost all of these knee pains you'll find will be one-sided you can get dual sided knee pains and if you if you're getting bilateral knee pain the problem is almost always that the seat is way too high way too low or the cue factor is way off so if the seat is catastrophically low you might get frontal knee pain on on both knees if it's catastrophically high you might get posterior knee pain on both legs but the vast majority of them will be one-sided and in terms of the causation there are so many possibilities for what could be causing these things that i can't possibly go over them all but i'll give you a couple of examples Let's say that you've got a rider whose position is pretty good. They're dominant in their right leg and they have a shorter right leg. That rider will have a tendency to drop their right hip down and forward to favor their dominant side to protect the shorter leg. They will drop their hip down and forward, which then places their pelvis oblique to the center line of the bike and their left knee, the opposite knee, will get forced away from the top tube. So they'll look down and they'll notice that their right knee is close to the top tube. Are you describing me here? Away. <laughs> this is your right hip drop in a nutshell, exactly right. And yours is caused by You've got a shorter left leg, don't you? Uh, you're right, I've forgotten. Right. Right leg. So there you go. This is this is this is Cam 101. Yeah. <laughs> so the rider will sit oblique to the bike, their left knee will have its plane of motion challenged. And if you had a hundred riders who were doing this, some of the, like 50 of them will get ITB pain, 20 of them will get patellofemoral pain, one of them will get pes anserinus pain, <laughs> and, right. and five of them will get, you know, the, the posterior pain. So the pain that you get depends upon so many other factors, but it, essentially it comes down to what is the weakest link in your knee. You know, right. Whichever one is your weakest link, that thing will start hurting first. But the solution to the problem is to resolve the thing that's, cha that's challenging the plane of motion of your left leg. 
shim your right leg. So in your case, you've got a six millimeter shim, which basically squares you up and stops your opposite leg hurting, right? Mm. So the, the solution is, you know, is multifactorial. You, the position basically needs to be symmetrical. Mm. And you need to find where that symmetry problem is coming from so that your nervous system is not favoring your dominant leg. Most often you'll find of, of, of 100 people with knee pain, most of them, probably 90 of them, it'll be their left knee because most of us have dominant right legs. So our brain will favor our right leg and protect it and at the expense of the opposite leg. Um, to give you another example, if the Q factor for the rider is far too narrow, let's say that they're really wide hipped and they've got bad hip impingement, their knees are chopping outside the line of the pelvis, uh, outside the line of the pedal. The rider will not generally evenly chop like this. What they'll do is their brain will go, oh, you know, if we keep doing this, we're going to injure both of our knees. So they will drop one of their hips, usually their right hip. Mm -hmm. They'll drop that hip down and forward, which brings the right knee to track vertically over the center of the pedal. Yep. And the right leg is therefore happy. And the left leg gets absolutely murdered. So the <laughs> left side cops twice as much load. And I believe that my theory is that there's an evolutionary causation behind this. The nervous system is is more inclined to protect one leg so that you can still move around rather than injuring both of your legs. Yeah. So you'll always favor and protect your dominant side. And the, the pain that you get depends upon which connective tissue structure is the most easily inflamed in your particular body. Yeah, so it's not easy to predict. But the solution is the same. Um, a good symmetrical position and, uh, you know, the, the real obvious ones, if the, 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 the seat is way too high, way too low, and, you know, these are the, the boxes to tick straight away and the Q factor and then it comes down to the subtle things leg length differences and that kind of stuff mm. yeah okay well we've got some good pieces we can link to on all these topics that we people do. can watch yep absolutely okay good cheers